Okay, good morning. I'm Mike Cherry from Stanford University, and my group does the Data Coordination Center for uh, ENCODE Project. Um, unfortunately, it's not, it's uh, covering too much today, so I won't give you an interactive uh, uh, demo of this, but uh, hopefully I'll point you to enough information that you'll be able to do that on your, on your own. Um, we hope that we've done enough as far as creating tutorials and such that you'll be able to do that. Today, so what I'm uh, talking about right now is a little bit. So is the uh, data accessibility and how to, uh, and the processing that we do at the DCC and introduce uh, the standards that the data is put through. Uh, you'll hear a little bit later uh, uh, after me, actually, not that long from now, uh, about uh, uh, how to interpret some of the data as well as the uh, uh, analysis that comes comes at the very end. Okay, so the goal of what I'm telling you today is, uh, is so that you'll learn uh, uh, at least in concept, how to download data, uh, where to find the data, uh, information about the features of our portal, the uh, understanding of why we create metadata, maybe not uh, uh, what the metadata is all about, as well as um, uh, a, a real cursory introduction to the processing uh, pipelines that we've created. Okay, so as you've seen, the uh, ENCODE is a collection of assays of characteristics of the genome. These assays put together are used to uh, 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 create, uh, associated together, used to uh, define where promoters and enhancers and such might be. The, the assays themselves are just measuring ver various character characteristics of the genome, such as accessibility of the DNA and where particular proteins are bound. So I want to focus uh, my talk on uh, uh, this particular issue, a topic that came up in this particular issue about the reproducibility of uh, research. So of course this is a big uh, problem and we're all sort of, sort of uh, uh, want to make sure that the data we provide is, is very standardized and reproducible, reproducibility. Nature came up with <coughs> is a collection of articles that have uh, come out over the past couple of years. Um, there is a URL at the bottom, you probably can't read it, but I think if you Google that very top line, you'll, you'll find this issue. So some of the, the, the big worries, concerns that are pointed out here is that the, the antibodies, uh, the problems, I'll get more about this, you need quality control and particular measures of confidence. You uh, want to have, make sure that there's appropriate replication designed into the experiment. Um, the data needs to be accessible and not hidden away somewhere. And that there needs to be really a standardized unique identifiers for the, for the data sets themselves. Okay, so I'll start in on, on the accessibility of the data. As been mentioned a couple of times, the encodeproject.org is the main portal for the site. Um, you can, you can uh, basically find everything that the project has. It's a very, very transparent project. <coughs> everything that we have is available from this website. Uh, this will include documentation of our standards and publications, as, as Mike had already mentioned. If you go to this website now, really quickly, um, before I move on, you'll see that there's mainly four menus at the top. You can get at the data that we provide. Um, you can understand uh, uh, what we're doing because of the documentation we provide, lists of publications, uh, and in particular, this the one on the farthest right there, the, the menu is help. So we've been putting together uh, large sets of tutorials and guides. Um, we certainly need to develop that more, but uh, I, I think you can get uh, into the project pretty quickly by uh, going there. In particular, as Fung mentioned, that there was a users meeting last summer where there was a three-day uh, uh, meeting with lots of tutorials uh, and uh, uh, presentations. You'll find videos of those there. So they're, they're not your common little five-minute tutorials. It's actually the whole talk. But you'll, you'll hear from Jill and the others uh, in an hour uh, format of what they actually have, have done in a much more uh, uh, rich way than, than we'll get in the short presentation today. So I encourage you to go there. And we'll also have the videos and, and everything from this meeting to, uh, to go up there. Uh, and, and of course, there's always a search box for getting in information. Uh, and if you really just want to get in there quickly, you don't know where to start, there's a, there's a quick uh, help down at the bottom. Okay, so the, the main look of the page, if you go in and click on uh, uh, from uh, data, go to assays, you'll get this page. This is the, the, the starting view. You'll see all of the uh, experiments uh, that have been provided, uh, that have been collected by us. I did miss one little thing up here, sorry. Uh, the, the total. So to date we have um, over 5,000 data sets, uh, experiments that have been available. So that's more than 5,000 files because of the replicates and such. This includes a large number of biosamples. So the biological material that has been included. 
And of course, there's uh, hundreds of te uh, terabytes of files that are available uh, for download uh, from our Amazon AdSense. As of last week, we've included the epigenetics roadmap metadata uh, into this site. Uh, it was quite a, a project to synchronize the metadata on these, so we've, we've taken the roadmap metadata and incorporated it in so into our uh, um, site and uh, had to do a lot of work to, to map it up to the standards that we use for, for ENCODE itself. Uh, and so that allows me to remember to say that here, at the very bottom of this page, uh, you'll see, you'll have the ability to switch between projects. So you can, you'll find at the very bottom a projects heading and you can click there to see just the, the roadmap experiments. Uh, by default, you come in and it's the ENCODE experiments. Okay. So this is called a faceting search, which is basically a way of filtering. So we have uh, large amounts of metadata, very rich, hundreds of fields that are available for each experiment. And what we've done on the side is create these facets, sort of uh, pre-computed filters that you can do. So if you click on these, these numbers there, you know, like on a shopping site, you reduce the total number of matches as you go forward. And so in this example here, we've clicked it down to a, a smaller set, so there's only six experiments. At this point or any point along the way, you can click on the download button. It doesn't actually download the files immediately. It gives you the URLs that you can use to retrieve those files uh, because you may have many hundreds of thousands. You don't actually, uh, not hundreds of thousands, tens, but uh, you probably don't necessarily want to download those files to your Mac or whatever. Uh, with the URLs, you can take that and, and download it from any, any command line. We also give you a short summary of the metadata associated with those files. There is also a visualize button, and you can use uh, track hubs to the Santa Cruz browser to actually display these particular uh, experimental results on the Santa Cruz browser as well. Okay, so that's the, the, the biggest feature of the ENCODE portal uh, as far as getting at the data. It's normally where we'd want to spend a lot of time on an interactive uh, session, but uh, I encourage you to explore that, and hopefully the, the tutorials are there. If you need assistance from uh, the DCC in any particular way, there's a, on the site there's a, there's a help desk uh, email. And I certainly encourage you all to, to uh, basically tell us anything. If it works, it doesn't work, uh, how can we help you? Okay. As you dig deeper into the, the, the individual experiments, you'll see that we've accessioned basically everything so that um, Everything about the experiments have been, have been accessioned, and so in this case, it's an, an, an antibody has been used uh, in an experiment, and so the antibody itself has a record. The biosamples have, have records, and these are all accessioned. So we've accessioned things by categories. It's basically a shortcut so that we can sort of remember these license plate numbers. So it's ENCODE at the beginning, then there's uh, like FF for files, there's, a, uh, uh, there's numbers and then letters. So, um, so all the accession numbers look in this way, so it's easy to find. I think a particular uh, aspect of this is that you can share the accession number with somebody else. The accession number may go to a file, but it also is associated with the metadata for that file. So you really only have to give somebody the accession number, and then they can retrieve whatever you, you, uh, you want them to. You can also share a list of accession numbers, and that allows them to download the same files that you have. So you don't need to, you know, share some complicated file name uh, directory path such as that. You just need the accession number itself. So I've talked a little bit about uh, a few of these already. We need to have um, uh, uh, high standards for the information that comes in. We want to be able to have replicates uh, of, of uh, designed into the experiment itself. And part of the standards is to create metadata. And um, this is really an amazing part of the ENCODE project is that the laboratories have committed to sharing the information about their experiments, okay? So those of you in the wet lab, you know that you write down in your, your lab books, you know, how you made the solution, where you bought your products, uh, how you did the extraction of your DNA, you know, what speed you ran the centrifuge at, all this kind of information. Normally when you read a paper, you won't find this information, right? They'll say, oh, we did it with a method that we previously used published here. You go to that paper and it says, oh, we use this method that was mentioned on this website, but it references a supplemental site and it was done with changes not published, okay, right? So how are you supposed to reproduce that experiment? Read the minds, call them up. The student has already left, the lab notebook's been lost, uh, right? So there's a commitment from the ENCODE production labs that they provide us all of this information. It's a requirement, okay? So this is, this is really incredible, right? I mean, so it's, it's just 
part of the process of ENCODE is that all this metadata is transmitted to us and is made available and stored in the database. Uh, you can retrieve it all. Built into the standardization that's done is that the experiments, the particular assays, the experiments have to uh, match a particular standardized methods uh, uh, approach. And this will include, for many of them, uh, replicates. So in this particular experiment, you see that the same biosample, um, two different libraries were made from that biosample. And each one of those libraries was sequenced independently. And at the bottom there, what it's showing is there's an accession number for each of the FASTQ files <coughs> associated with those replicates. So you can download the replicates independent of, of, of everything. Again, so the transparency of sharing all the data together. And I, I, again, I have to uh, really uh, congratulate all the labs for their commitment to doing this. It's an, a lot of extra work. There are standards, standards as far as the quality of the data, the, the, the read depth of the data. Of course, they're providing all the metadata. Uh, it's, it's typically something that most labs wouldn't want to do. Um, um, here, it's, it's just the requirement of the project. So the whole point of ENCODE, of course, is to create the highest quality standard of results, of metadata, um, of all the processing. So the point is, is you really can't get better data than what you can get out of ENCODE, okay? It's, it's just not gonna be there. It's really, um, um, we often get asked, can we incorporate our data into the, med, uh, into the ENCODE portal? And the issue is the, the level of these standards. When people say they want to do that, I know that they don't approach us, they approach the labs typically, and the labs will tell them what they have to do, and I don't think to date we've gotten uh, more than maybe one person that says, oh yeah, I can do that. Um, it's, a, it's a really high bar that, that's, that's put on the ENCODE labs. Okay, and so, so moving forward with some of the other aspects of this, we want to have um, control of the confidence um, and, and, um, and reliability of samples, and part of that goes to uh, the pipelines that are created. Okay. So again, like you're, if you're on the dry side, or not, you might read in, a, in an experiment that a, the, the data was processed in a particular way, uh, using method published by such and such with changes here, we substituted this version of that and all this, right? So you oftentimes don't really know what the processing was involved. Or they say processed uh, and they, they give you some, some name for a pipeline of things, which you don't actually know what, what goes on inside of that. So avoid this sort of uh, pipeline black box sort of, sort of point as part of ENCODE, so we want to have everything completely transparent. So the pipelines have been defined um, and are run on each type of sample or on each data type that's submitted to the, to the project uh, by my group. Um, and and uh, to do this, each one of the data uh, uh, producing centers has come together with the others creating the same uh, type of data to define a, a, a pipeline to be used. Now, this may not necessarily be the best, trendiest pipeline that, that's out there, but of course, the <coughs> pipeline analysis itself is research. So, but what, is, what has been agreed upon is a very high quality standard pipeline to be used, and it's used for everything of that particular data type. So this is, uh, avoids the problem where you want to compare data between different labs. You would have to actually understand how they, how they process the data very specifically to know is it really appropriate to compare the data uh, one for one. So all data from ENCODE of a particular data type can be compared because it's all been run the same way. It has the same standards for production. Uh, sort of everything is, is really the same. And um, so if you want to understand the pipeline, you can look at a page that describes the pipeline itself. Each one of the boxes tells you um, a little information about the step and which software is being used. And of course, with you have metadata for the sample, for uh, the files. You also have metadata for the processing of the files. So this describes if on a particular experiment, you want to look at the results, you can see the processing that was done on that file here. And so in this case, you see these duplicate, duplicate boxes, uh, one on top of the other, the replicates involved in here. So each replicate was processed and then, and then joined at the end. So each replicate's processing is also showing, shown here. And if you, what it's showing in the, in the upper right there is if you click on one of the boxes, you'll get more detail about what happened underneath that you'll see what versions of the programs that were used um, and, and sort of more detail uh, flowing into there. We, s we track all of this. This is really rich metadata that's provided. Um, and as with the data coming in and flowing out of, of the pipelines, if uh, 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 integrative analysis has been done on these files, we, we have that data coming, that we have the results of those analysis coming back into the portal. 
and the metadata associated with what was done in the computational labs is also included. So at the very last thing here is the, um, the antibodies. Um, if any of you have worked with antibodies, you know it's kind of a little bit of magic how, uh, how they're made. Um, it's a huge problem because the reproducibility of antibodies from one bunny to the next is, 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 can be quite variable. And so um, ENCODE, again, standardizing everything to really an extreme level, um, requires a lot of extra uh, validation work to go into that. So what you'll see for a particular <coughs> antibody here that has been determined to work, there's the Western blot provided, okay? So how many times you look at a, at a paper and they're talking about an antibody and they show you their Western blot, why they think that antibody works. Um, the ENCODE labs do that for you. So this is, this is a huge amount of extra work, a lot of grumbling because it is so much extra work, but it's the requirement of the project. Um, you know, you, I don't know what the exact numbers are, but it's a huge number of the antibodies that just never pass. Uh, it's really a small number. They, they really have to process lots of them uh, to get the, the few that work. Okay. So I hope you'll see that, that because of the standards and the transparency uh, uh, and the, the agreement between the labs and the, uh, both the, the wet labs and the dry labs, that ENCODE really provides you the best possible data that you can, you can get anywhere. And so then that allows you to compare your results with that, knowing that, you know, um, if you find some variant uh, variation between your data and the ENCODE data, you can explore into the metadata and find out what might be uh, uh, happening there. We've hopefully reduced the variables associated uh, with all this. And then the last two things are, so as far as it's a, an advanced workshop and some of the things you'll hear a little bit later, you want to start processing data coming out of ENCODE. We have uh, created programmatic access, programmatic access uh, into the portal. This is uh, uh, described a little bit in the uh, help section under tutorials uh, and, and, and the help there. There is an API which allows you to get at all of the metadata. Basically everything in the database is transparent. The facets are only a small amount of that metadata and that's the facets are created for a user interface, a, a usability uh, for people. But you can, with a computer, you can get at everything. Um, <coughs> there, there are examples of Python scripts that you can use and get into the, these files. And so you can develop, if you're a programmer or can twist somebody's arm that is a programmer, you can really get at uh, uh, all of this information in ENCODE, uh, pulling it back as, as you want. And the little example here, if you look at the, the slides uh, online when they're available there, it's basically you just add a little tag at the end saying, give me this information in JSON format. So the, everything that you see on the page, uh, uh, that's, uh, the information that's used to build the page is actually available as a JSON format. So when you do a search and you see a long list of experiments there, you can get at this from the JSON objects themselves. I really I skimmed over the way that we standardize information but, uh, and that we use ontologies. And so using the ENCODE uh, uh, standards for the metadata um, has allowed us to incorporate um, information from other projects because we're using ontologies. So for example, the Uberon ontology, which talks about anatomy, uh, cell line ontologies, uh, assay ontologies and such, are all um, are, are used and that gives a standard way of going between uh, experiments as well as projects. Um, and we're uh, starting to incorporate other, other types of information as well, as uh, Mike and Elise tell us we should. Uh, so, uh, and then this is all coming out of the portal. And so the last thing is the, the group. Uh, really got a great group of people uh, at Stanford there. The uh, second row are the wranglers and the assistant uh, uh, curators that help uh, all this information. They, you know, in a sense have to touch all of the data coming out of the labs. Uh, they work with the labs to sort of help them remember that particular fields of metadata need to be incorporated. Uh, there's a lot of effort really going into uh, matching the design of the experiment, so that the types of replicates, uh, 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 how the metadata is uh, described. Uh, and then in the bottom level, we have the folks that build the pipelines, maintain the software we use within the group for analyzing the data and just pushing things back and forth. Two great people that have created our website, really fantastic pair there, uh, as well as the, the fellows that do the, uh, the website itself, the UI, uh, system managers, and then the secretary for the group. And I thank you very much. <laughs>